I am so happy to have my friend Steph Mariani hey. here in studio. Um, she pops back and forth from Oahu to here. And I haven't seen her since the Grammys in New York, which was a very, very, very busy time. Lots going on music-wise yes. there, right? Yes. And I had a chance to watch you uh, play at the Nohoku Hanohano Awards. You did a beautiful job. You were up there on stage with our friend Pat Simmons, Jr., who I just love. I mm -hmm. just adore. Yes. And also, you had uh, Dave Tacheroni. Is it pronounced Tacheroni? It's, uh, everyone says Dave Tucerone. Tucerone. But it's Tucerone, because he's Italian. Tucerone, yeah. Right? So Dave Tucerone, though. That's and, and also, um, an interesting group of um, other, who was on stage also with you? Who was the lineup there on stage? So we had Sandy Essman, mm. um, and she did the first segment. And then on drums, we had Capono. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. Who was great. Yeah. I mean, just a, all, all we had was bass, Dave on bass, Capono on uh, uh, Cajon. Yeah. And then uh, Pat and I played guitar, mm -hmm. and we all, we all did our vocals. And it sounded perfect. It sounded perfect. You looked fabulous. It's so nice to realize, you know, of course, that's a big thing. A lot of people watch that on TV. It's a big event for Hawaii. And um, then, to top it off, you got an award in the alternative yeah. music category. You won your first Nahoku, and I was just so <laughs> thrilled to see you win and get up there on stage and be able to do that acceptance speech, which was, again, perfect as well. Thank so you. we're going to talk a little bit about the path that got you. So, I mean, a lot of other musicians are curious about what it takes. And you've been working at this a long time. And you've grown and grown, and you take nothing for granted. You keep learning um, and, and keeping, you keep ex re finding out what you need to learn to take it to the next level. And I, th I saw that happen with this Stay Gold CD. I saw you really being dedicated to make it happen. I was here, actually, was that your third or fourth CD? That was my third. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it was just a huge leap forward um, because you learned so much. Now, one thing people may not be aware is you travel all around the country and play. I do. I do. I'm folk music. I'm not Hawaiian music. So I only do a select amount of shows here in the Hawaiian Islands uh, per year. Mm -hmm. And then mostly I am on the mainland. Mm -hmm. And you also are part of the uh, indie group that uh, Grant and, and Eileen have. And you have performed at those um, special events that happen. I know in New York. Wasn't that a fun event there? That was so beautiful. Was I think so they nice. just they get better and better. Yeah. I loved that. And that was a great venue, too. What was the name of that? Uh, it was a club. It was like Penny something. I can't remember, but it was so classy. It Such was like a underground. Nice club. Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, me not knowing New York at all. I mean, I'd been to New York only once years and years and years ago. So it was such a trip to see everyone there. And, of course, you've played in New York. And you connected also with some people in, I was really shocked. All of a sudden, this Nashville element came into your music last year. Yeah, so I went to Nashville and played a couple of shows, and one of them was the Indie Collab show. Um, and that was, that was kind of neat, just going from door to door, looking at different artists, different music. And mm. it's a little more um, my genre, which is like folk, folk rock. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to say country because I don't have much of a twang, but it's... Not really country, no. Yeah, just kind of, yeah, just um, down-home music like that, just playing guitar and singing. But it was, uh, it was great. And, uh, and we, I know we're going to talk about um, my next record, but we're going to be recording it in Nashville. How exciting. Yeah. Well, good players. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably the best players in the world are sitting right there. Absolutely true. And so let's talk a little bit about that night. I mean, to to get a Nohoku is not an easy thing. It, you know, when there's a lot of people in the category, sometimes categories don't, don't have a lot of people, and then it's easier. But just even to get nominated takes a lot. And um, it, it's very different than the Grammy. A group it's it's people appreciate people who are really working hard and they in their own Hawaiian way keep an eye on you <laughs> they, they, like they're keeping an eye on you to see how your process is sure, going right sure. did you feel that way sometimes that you had to be Pono um yeah I mean it's like my album stay gold mm -hmm. it's the same same concept absolutely I think you made a very wise choice when you cho chose Dave Tassaroni to be your producer engineer I think so very very well he's done some of the best right yeah he he won uh, like seven Nahoku awards 
And I was he, just one of them. He's not an easy guy. He's, he's a kind of strict taskmaster, isn't he? He's pretty tough. Yeah. Yeah. He's tough. I mean, I know you, and and if we were talking about ego earlier, if you had an ego and couldn't take direction, it would be hard. You had to kind of really be open to receive his direction, right? Yeah, you kind of got to just get naked and, you know, just be humble and, and take it. And um, the reward is, like you brought out earlier, is the learning process, right? Mm -hmm. So, And that's the cool thing with social media now. You get to watch people learn and progress. Yeah. But with someone like Dave, um, you have two choices. You walk away or you sit there and you learn. Yeah. And you did it. You learned. And so now... It's always like, oh, gosh, okay, got to this level, got to take it to the next level, right? And so the next level for you is going to be creating a, a, a even more interesting music with, you found Lonnie, Lonnie Parks? Yeah. And you're going to uh, be producer, work with him and co-write with him? Yeah, so Lonnie and I um, and Jody, and we have a, a Jody Quine, we have a little crew of people that oh. always kind of sneaks away during the pre-telecast in L.A., mm -hmm. and we go grab drinks at a little secret lobby, and um, we were doing that a couple of years ago, and we started talking, and I started telling him about a song I was writing, mm -hmm. and he says, you know, we should, uh, we should toss some things back and forth, and he's worked with, um, oh man, he's worked with some great guys that they're their names are, uh, are escaping me, but um, in the folk world, mm -hmm. right, which is where my roots are. And um, so we decided to co-write. And that was like two years ago. And oh. I sent him the first song about a year ago. And we tossed it back and forth. And it's, it's coming out really good. So we're going to keep doing that. And then uh, I'm going to be out there in his studio um, in July for his wedding. And, um, and we're going we're gonna to maybe just throw something together. So, so this is a year working on one song. Now, most people try to get a whole CD out in a year. And yeah. That's a lot of time working on one song. Yeah. I mean, um, everything happens in its own time. Some mm -hmm. songs you write in three minutes. Yeah. Some songs, they can take a year. Yeah. Because you're, you're always trying to improve it. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, well, it's, I'm not saying exactly what I want to say. Right. So I'll wake up at 5 a.m. is like my golden hour. Mm -hmm. And I'll, even this morning, I woke up at 5 a.m. and I realized what the next song was. Oh, really? And I'm going to, yeah, and I'm going to send it to him as soon as, as soon as I get home to my the, studio. The words came to you. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's the whole concept, everything. And what's cool about it is I'm a good starter. Mm -hmm. It's hard to finish, right? Yeah. But Lonnie's a great finisher. So uh -huh. I can send him my ideas and he has just these really great ways of articulating what I'm trying to say uh -huh. in a way that everybody understands. Because I'm, I'm an introvert, so I'm, I can be in my own head a lot. I have never thought of you as an introvert, okay, so Steph here, Right. Okay, so here's the thing about that. Like, as, as entertainers, I think you'd be surprised how many are because we're writers, first mm -hmm. and foremost. Yeah. Right? We're, our, everything's born when we're writing. Um, you know, and we have to look... I know I look inward for that. And it's, I have had to exercise my extroversion in order to do the things that I do, hmm. you know, like to get in on stage, you know, in front of like a small group of people, which by the way, I have to say getting on stage in front of a, a huge group of people, like at the Nahoku Awards, it's way easier than Is a it? small group. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Kalani was telling me there were 1.2 million viewers that Seriously? day. Yeah. And that was like, I was not nervous. I was I was fine. Wow. And I felt like I was in a room of, of my friends. Like, these people put me here, right? So I'm giving them a gift. Yeah. yeah. I, I never would have guessed it was that many people. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's, very, very It's pretty interesting. Widely, widely watched here in the state. What did it feel like for you? It was, uh, it felt good. Mm -hmm. but again, it was, uh, I didn't feel like I was in a room of strangers. Like, mm -hmm. the, these people had, had put me there. And I had Dave behind me playing bass. Yeah. And I can't tell you how good that feels to just be able to relax and just play to him. And he was just there supporting me. I yeah. just, I love that man. Mm -hmm. No, he's, he's been wonderful. And seeing that, because he doesn't play on stage often. You, you told me it only been, that was the second time playing, which That's shocked me saying, because yeah. he knows everyone. And, and I, he plays everything perfectly yeah yeah but that was when I saw that I could see it was his way of supporting you you know I it's interesting because I felt that yeah yeah and it was it was a very great moment uh, of course so then you get into what's next now one people I think most people realize this but the music industry is not what it used to be as far as making money um you still literally can maybe sell some stuff you sell stuff when you're on the road I'm yeah. sure some people pick up absolutely your, 
Your they music's still still on your buy albums on the road, yeah. Yeah, um, but it's so little that you get um, with downloads these days. Mm -hmm. um, it, you can have a lot of. I mean, sometimes I'll have thirty different uh, Spotify or Rhapsody, whatever. You know, one penny, one penny, one penny, one penny. People don't realize it's very hard to make an income just from what you have out there. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it's it's um, you're doing it for more than the money. <laughs> you're doing yeah, it for I mean, more if, than the money. If I if I to the degree that I do this, I I make good money. Mm -hmm. I just have to decide to what degree. You know, mm -hmm. do I want to be on the road year round, right? Or do I do a few shows here and there and travel to festivals and and different things and Grammy mm -hmm. Week, um, doing big shows like that. So it's it's a it's a choice. And for me, I keep music in a place in my life where it's not my bread and butter, my main bread and butter. But if I were to do that, the, mo the money is good. Really? Yeah. Because I haven't heard that from most of the people. Yeah. That's, that's the first time actually I've heard that in this day and age. I don't usually hear that the money is good. Yeah. But then that's other venues around the country. So I'm not playing, I'm not playing covers locally. You know, right. I'm not doing that kind of thing. Right. Um, I don't really do a lot of covers. So there are very specific shows yeah. that I do. And, and, they're, and they're original music. So we've got to talk about the value of social media. Okay. Because you're very good at social media. I can always tell right away um, how good someone is at social media is you just post something and all of a sudden there's like 80 people liking it. Right? <laughs> that, it, it could be anything, right? But, but you have that kind of audience you've developed that just love following you. And I think it's a couple things. I'm curious what you think it is. I think it's because you're real. You really do show people. You keep, you draw, I think drawing people into your life is important. I think you do a good job. Of, of drawing people into your life so they feel like they can relate, relate to you. How do you work with that? You mean how do I... Um, um, relate, relate to people so that they can feel like they know you. Um, I think through my music, people mm. probably feel like they know me. Mm -hmm. um, with social media, I think you're, you nailed it. It's about being real um, and, I th and being relatable. Mm. Right. I think the music industry has changed. We were talking about earlier, mm -hmm. you know, the, the people decide what they want to hear and who they want to lift up, you know, and who they want to pay tickets to see. Mm -hmm. um, so I think people are looking for something real and we're get, really getting away from that like fan, you know, mentality, mm -hmm. you know, where they're like, you're the star and they're the fan. It's more like, you know, being like the girl next door, the person that knows you, you know, mm -hmm. and I have a great love for people. And I have a message that I use music as a platform to project. So I think that um, people connect with the message. I think that's very, very important. I think that's, and, and it's an interesting point because a lot of times people, I think as much as like five, 10 years ago, would think that you have to have a fan base. But that may be true for like superstars, you know, where you have fan bases. Right. Also, if you're a, um, a young artist um, and have young listeners, you know, if you have teenage listeners, maybe fan base. But I think, you know, people in their 20s and 30s and 40s um, aren't in that category anymore. You know, I think they're past the fan and they're just interested in you and what you have to say. And I think you're right that the fan thing doesn't fulfill that relationship. Mm -hmm. um, you need to feel like, you know, I can get something from hearing this song. Mm -hmm. I can get something if I go to your site and see what you're up to, you know that it's like really truly a friend, not just a Facebook friend, you know, quote unquote, right? Right, right. So I don't think that there's such a separation now between the artist and the people who buy their music and support their music. I think it's, yeah, I think you have to be, you have to be relatable. Um, I do a lot of interaction on my social media. So if people reach out to me, mm -hmm. you know, and congratulate me, I, I, try to respond to everybody or acknowledge what everyone has said. Mm. So um, getting away from that, like the, the me's and the them's, you know, kind of thing. I think that's a very archaic uh, way of looking at music now because we have social media. That means we don't have to give up the rights to our music away. Mm -hmm. That means that um, we're in control of it. We control the content and people decide. So it's just, it's different. Yeah, it is. What is your what is directing you now with your songs that you say you're introverted? And I do get that. You know, I'm very introverted and I have to be in this business and radio and talk all the time. But I find a lot of introverts See, get Cindy. in the radio <laughs> because that's you behind the mic, not yeah. out there. Oh, but, that's true. <laughs> but, but but you you always do have a message and that's directed by your life. 
I could hear it and stay gold. What you're going through, you're yeah. very influenced by that. Yeah. And relationships definitely mm -hmm. are um, play a role in that. Mm -hmm. And you do include that, you know, when you go through those things with people. Um, what is the major influence that's going to be affecting your music in the next CD? We're just going to have to wait and see um, <laughs> because it's a it's a journey, and I have no predetermined idea about where that's going. Um, and this is what I did with Stay Gold too. Mm. I just I just went through a segment of my life. I wrote these songs, and I recorded them, and then all of a sudden the theme comes to the fore. Right. Mm. So as far as what's next, I'm not even sure what the answer is, but I stay tuned and. <laughs> We'll figure it out. Well, and you kind of went past some of the things that you were going through in that stay goal by the time it actually got recognized and was out, you'd already moved on, you know, because it takes that long to yeah. get in the studio and do that. So Yeah, you know, um, a lot of my songs I would say that's true for, but not stay gold mm. because of the message. Mm -hmm. The message is to remain a good person in a hard world, and it just happened to be released during a time where people are pitted against each other. The media is just going crazy right now. People are super out of character, you know, getting negative and trying to meet ferociousness with ferociousness. And um, the message is to not participate in that, mm. right? And to exercise compassion and kindness like a muscle. So every mm. day do something compassionate, mm -hmm. um, you know, like, you know, hold the door open for someone struggling or but stop your day and do something and you can change the way you feel and treat people if you exercise those things. Well, and that, that's a lot like aloha and that, that really yeah. is aloha in action. And the thing is, we get tested. We get tested. Yeah. We get tried. Oh, yeah. And just when we think we're getting it down, you know, <laughs> new things come along, right? Yes. That, that, uh, that put us up and down. You had a very difficult year. Uh, last year, mm -hmm. you know, you, your mother passed on. Mm -hmm. um, you had to go and do and deal with that. And a, there was a lot of stuff you had to deal with with mm -hmm. the passing of your mother. You were in a relationship that fell apart, that basically you had to move on from. I mean, these were things that, you know, you can't run from, you can't hide, you have to deal with, you know. Mm -hmm. And meanwhile, still maintain what you're doing with your work. You have two jobs. Um, you do your music and you also do real estate. And you do very well in both. Um, but, you know, it's like sometimes, did you just feel like you needed just to go hide for a while? Or, I mean, because you were going through difficult things. Yeah. I mean, nobody, um, I'm not going to talk about like all the things that I've been through in the past couple of years when I was making the album. But basically, at the end of the day, it was a challenge for me. Um, you know, because we, we're, we're coming out with our documentary Bob mm -hmm. Stone's getting that wrapped up. Um, so that's coming out in uh, July. Yay. Um, but all the things that led up to it, um, I had, I was tested more than I have ever been in my life mm -hmm. to stay gold. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And it's, and I'm, and I'm not, I don't talk about it because it doesn't serve a purpose, but um, it, it is absolutely about me, something I have to exercise. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying everyone stay gold because I am so proficient at it, right? Um, but it's something that's always because I've that's my message. It's always in my mind. Mm. I have to set the example in that. But I like that. I like that kind of pressure on myself because because mm -hmm. then it makes me exercise those things. Right. So yeah. I will I play games with myself and I really do go out of my way to do things for people that can't do anything for me. Right. And I don't talk about it. Mm. Right. Well, that's, that's part of it. That's, that is part of it. It that, really that, is. That is part. If you're doing it just to make yourself look good, then that's not really a true act of loving kindness. You're doing right. it for your ego rather than to really helping someone. Right. You literally, like, nothing, you cannot be repaid in mm -hmm. any way. And that includes not talking about it. That's a beautiful thought. And, and there is so much need. Uh, there's no lack of opportunity in this world, in this day and age. Uh, not to be aware of that. And just the fact that you live in Hawaii, when you go on the road, they expect you to be, I mean, I don't know what people necessarily think of, of an artist from Hawaii, but you must see that when you travel around and go to Nashville and places like this. I mean, some of them respect Hawaiian musicians, but, but you know, you have your own identity. You're not necessarily what would be considered a typical artist from Hawaii. Mm -hmm. So you have to actually, um, again, stay gold in the fact that you're true to yourself and you may not fit within what they think you're going to be about. Well, yeah, I mean, um, yeah, I'm not Hawaiian, mm -hmm. right? And, and I'm, I'm still trying to 
broadcast this message of aloha Mm because really that is you're right that's what stay gold is it's aloha and it's what and i am thoroughly convinced that that is exactly what the world needs Mm -hmm. is to change the way that they think it doesn't matter what your political affiliation is or where you're from or who you are or whatever preconceived ideas or problems that you have if you if you practice aloha right and i don't know that people completely understand what that is right so it, I guess stay gold is, is my way of projecting that to the rest of the world that maybe doesn't understand what aloha is. Mm. Do you give yourself uh, a timetable for doing a CD? Do you have any idea how long it'll take to create the next CD? Nope. And you, but you're going to Nashville in July. I'm actually going to upstate New York. Lonnie oh. is, that's where his studio is. Oh, and he's okay. getting married, yeah. And, uh, and then he's also going to be opening a studio in Nashville as well. How exciting. Yeah. Wow. So it'll, I'm sure it will be both. Wow. Isn't yeah. that interesting? So how do you juggle? Because you have to bring your money in, and it's expensive. You do a lot of traveling. I mean, I know how expensive traveling is, you know. I mean, between the hotels, the gas, the, everything, the travel is expensive. So how do you juggle your work and the way you live and your work and being music, which is music is very, very, very important to you. Yeah, so um, music is something that I am and work is something that I do. Mm -hmm. Um, So I get up pretty early in the morning and I start working and I work until I go to sleep. Mm. And I just absolutely love what I do. I love my work, I love music, Um, I try to practice self-care Mm. Um, you know, my exercising and I, I'm trying to be a well-rounded out person. So, um, I, I don't get overwhelmed by it, by trying to create some preconceived idea about where I should be every day. I just wake up and I, I try to stay organized too. Um, and I just, I just go until I fall asleep. Wow. And it takes a lot of in that course of one day <laughs> to do to do it. Yeah, sometimes it's I like, take naps, <laughs> <laughs> and and it takes a lot of energy to perform. I know you go to the Big Island a lot and have, and it's got to be very interesting. I don't know if you have friends over there, but we've been watching what's been going on on the Big Island. I actually was surprised at the Nahokus that there weren't more people that mentioned. Um, what's going on on the Big Island, but it's very, very challenging. Yeah, I didn't think about that. That's true. There weren't a lot of mentions. I thought there would be, but, but I mean, it's such a, a thing that's going to be taking a long time to survive, and there's a mm-hmm. lot of musicians and people over there who are, everyone's being impacted by it, of mm-hmm. course, and you could, you'd go over there and play quite often. I'd, I'd see you say I'm going over to the Big Island mm-hmm. what, two or three times a year at least, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah, so I do uh, music festivals over there quite a bit, Yeah. Um, but we had big winners from the Big Island, Kahula yes. Nui. Yeah. Who are, they're fantastic. They're the big band guys. And um, I forget which award they took, but they are, they are wonderful. They're from the Big Island. They're from yep. Kona, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it was good. It was it was well represented, of course. Maui and Maui, was, yeah, yes. it was very well represented. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I know and you know that there's some wonderful musicians here on Maui. But it's also changing and evolving. And there's um, an interesting whole new group of people. You're one, Kalani and others, who are coming in and bringing a new message. Um, and it's good to see that that's being accepted, you know, because it is evolving. It's definitely evolving, and it can't help but evolve, right? I mean, it has to evolve. And I'm friends with a lot of the musicians who've been there, you know, for years and years and years, but um, they're the ones that are giving the wise advice. And it was sad at the start of the Nohokos. You saw how many people passed away this year. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was... It was shocking yeah. when you just looked at all the number of great people who passed on. Yeah. So the the band, the, the wand is being passed on mm-hmm. to the next generation to carry this, you know. Yeah. Um, because it's already, I mean, there was just, a, what, I think it was about five or six of the greats that that left us last year. Yeah. So there's a big responsibility, and, and you, do, you do a lot. You do a lot to maintain it. And I can't wait to hear some of your new music and to see what you're going to be coming up with because I know you uh, you think a lot about it and it's it's quite an important way that you express yourself and I know it's from your heart and soul um, so I can't wait to to listen to what's coming up and what what comes next for you. Yeah, I'm I'm really excited about it. Just that what we've done so far is um, I feel like it's taking it to another level for me. Um, because I'm not 
writing and arranging it all myself. So now I'm bringing I'm bringing people in. Lonnie's Grammy nominated, and uh, and he's just he's fantastic. And we and you know we are affiliated with an incredible crew of people internationally. Mm. So it's um well I'm sure we'll be bringing in different people from that crew too. Mm, yeah, no, that's it. That creativity that is like the birthing of a project is so exciting. Yeah. There's so much that goes into that creation process. Mm -hmm. And then there's the part that we talked about. It's not just the creation, but it's the way you feed it afterwards and the way you market it and the way you get it out there and right. the way you take care of it. Right. I'm not real good at that. I like the creating process a lot more than taking care of it once it's out yeah. there. But it, it, but it is very important, and people don't realize. For someone like you and many people that are in this particular level, you've got to do it mainly yourself. You know, This is not mm -hmm. like something you hand over to someone else. This is, you know, you've got it also. That, so it's like a third job, really, which is the marketing part yeah. of it. Yeah. You know, I'm getting away from that, though, and I'm getting a lot of help. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's all on the back end, so you don't see it. But there is mm -hmm. no way humanly that I could do everything that I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, that, I can totally get that. I mean, really, I'm going, how in the world? <laughs> but, but I think you're a great inspiration to a lot of people, and um, you do stay gold. And I'm so happy that you got the recognition you deserve this year. And um, and there's more great stuff to come. I mean, there's more some wonderful things on the way still. Well, thank you. So you're just really just blossoming, and it's going to be an exciting adventure for us to follow. Yes, yes, I'm excited. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for coming in today, Steph. Thanks for having me, Cindy. Aloha. Aloha.